Oh man, I like this. I knew I'd like it. I really like it. It's fun. Oh, I like it. The placement of the pegs is good. Everything's good. And the seat, I'm surprised, man. This seat feels good, man. I'm stealing your bike, Frank. Cool. Iron Supply Power Sports. Here we are. They got a lot of bikes sitting out front. This. Or this. I don't know. That one looks pretty good, too. The black. Hmm. All right. Happy Saturday to you all. I am headed out this morning for a uh, breakfast meetup with uh, one of my buddies and a uh, channel subscriber uh, that is uh, wanting to go over to my warehouse and get some of those spare monitors and take a look at the IT equipment that I've got there to liquidate. Uh, anyway, um, I decided to take the Riker uh, today because the battery is a little bit low on it. It hasn't been exercised enough in recent history to uh, keep itself healthy. So, uh, running around and then potentially, depending on how my day goes, uh, as I get done at the warehouse and toward the middle of town and I head back out this way, I'm going to take this over to uh, a couple of uh, motorcycle dealers out here on this side of town and have them do a uh, quick appraisal, tell me what kind of money they're going to offer, and sell this off, trade it off. If it goes away this weekend, that's fine. It won't hurt my feelings too much. Probably need to take my uh, youngest daughter for another ride on it, though, before it disappears. <laughs> she likes this thing. She really gets a kick out of it. I didn't put my windscreen back on here, but uh, I'll do that later. I got most of the pictures that I need. Uh, today, the weather's clear and hot and sunny as usual, so uh, I'm gonna line this thing up in the driveway and take a whole bunch of pictures of it uh, with the accessories, the different stuff that's gonna be included and all that, and uh, advertise it. Uh, assuming I don't just get a fantastic offer from one of the motorcycle dealers when I roll by there. Uh, the one dealer that I want to stop at is, I, for some reason I cannot remember the name of it Freedom Motorsports or uh, it's not Iron Supply whatever it is it's a, 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 I feel like a tool I can't remember anyway it's out here uh, just on the edge of uh, Katy on uh, Old Highway 90 and uh, they are a Royal Enfield Triumph and something else dealer and uh, uh, you might want to stop before the uh, intersection there Cheese Dick um the, uh, <laughs> already backwards on my controls. Uh, I want to look at some of the Royal Enfields. Uh, I really want to sit down on the little Hunter 350, if they have one, and the Scram 411, because I've been looking hard at those. It'd be something new and interesting to uh, put into my riding repertoire. Uh, I've not, uh, I've not ridden any Royal Enfields ever. Uh, I've never had any exposure to them. Uh, I've sat on them a few times, but I've never ridden them. And uh, I was considering getting the uh, Himalayan or Himalayan. But when I was really looking at it hard was early in the game when they had just released them. And they were having a lot of problems with uh, the clutches and the transmissions holding up. And I shied away from them and then just never really rekindled the interest, I guess. Uh, the other issue is they're pretty heavy for what they are, and I just couldn't see the the benefit or the the, the radical upgrade or you know change in uh, what I've already got, which is the XT250. So if it was going to have more power, more you know something more off-roady, whatever, uh, it would have to be significantly different from the uh, from the XT250 to uh, be worth the upgrade, I would think. So I don't think it would be that radically different. <clears throat> and I don't really care for the looks of the Himalayan for some reason, it just, I don't know. It looks like everything, the crash guards and the headlight uh, setup and all that, it looks like it was an afterthought. Uh, it's very agricultural looking. I just, I don't know, I, that, the look of it doesn't appeal to me. But the uh, 
Scram 411, which is based roughly on the same bike, uh, I think it's the same frame, same engine, same everything, uh, is missing a lot of those tacked on bits. It's less tacky. <laughs> so, I don't know. That's what I was looking at. Could be interesting. And then, of course, I'll stop at Wild West on the way back through coming toward home and uh, have them give me an in-person appraisal. I uh, talked to one of the guys on the phone two weeks ago, a week and a half, yeah, but two weeks ago, and he said uh, that they're probably looking at uh, 6000 They might be able to do 6500 That's pretty low uh, considering the, uh, the private party value on this thing is almost 8000 so that means there's a almost two thousand dollar spread uh, i don't mind the dealer making a little bit of money but you know two grand we're talking 25 percent of the retail value they're screwing me it's a little much and of course if i go with a dealer then i'm definitely taking off this elka suspension and a lot of the add-on toys because they're not going to give me anything for those add-ons it's just lost money so I've considered getting an F3S, the Sport, uh, but I talked about that in the previous vlog. I don't know if that got published. I don't know if this one will be published. <laughs> Maybe on the Quasi Raw channel. Uh, check out my new channel that I, I started. I haven't uploaded much content to it yet, but more is coming, trust me. Uh, Quasi Raw. All together, one word, no spaces. Q-U-A-S-I-R-A-W. I'll just be raw, uncensored stuff less editing for me really less time sitting at the the bench polishing it up making it pretty adding bleeps to cover my f-bombs stuff like that i thought about getting an f3 but with can-am's track record for customer service and warranty claims and everything else nah, i don't know it's a shame. I mean, it, it is such a shame because the machine is mechanically sound. The engines are just fantastic in these things. I love them. Uh, and there are Riker owners out there that have got 60 and 80 and 100,000 miles on these Rikers. That's awesome, man. I mean, that's a huge testament to the driveline stability and the longevity on these things. That's just amazing. So the fact that they're quality control is so bad and you know they've gotten a bad reputation for warranty claims and the customer service and all that it puts off new buyers or you know eliminates what would have been return buyers loyal customers oh go 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 find that little pedal it's the thin one on the right timing. Nice. You made it. Bumpity bump bump. Nice front row. Curbside pickup. To go. It's to going. It's to going in my belly. Get in my belly. Yeah, good enough. Okay, well, made it to breakfast in one piece. Didn't end up in the, underneath any semis. Almost. Not quite. Food time. All right, everybody. Breakfast is done. And uh, I'm uh, joined now by one of my YouTube subscribers, Frank. Uh, he uh, rolled up this morning on uh, his XR150L. We're going to go over to uh, my warehouse, and he's going to take one of those giveaway monitors that I'm uh, getting rid of. I'm going to be interested to see how he straps it on the uh, bike or his back or something. <laughs> I told him I've got a couple of uh, those uh, motorcycle bungee nets that uh, he could borrow. So we'll see. Uh... So Frank was saying that he's got uh, several bikes, and he has a Himalayan as well. I told him that I was thinking about going over to that dealer in Katy, and he said, yeah, the name is Iron Supply, so I had it right in my head. I just couldn't quite remember. 
he said that he purchased his Himalayan like I don't know, just a couple months before the Scram 411 was announced to be released here, and uh, he's already done mods on his. Took down the, some of the stuff on the front of it. He said it's where it looks a little bit more like the Scram. So <laughs> great minds think alike. I'm going to try to corrupt him, uh, get him into moto camping. He said he's never done any moto camping. Hell, man, I go out and do that stuff all the time. Drop of a hat. So maybe I can convince him to do a weekender or something like that. He and his uh, buddies, uh, he's got the uh, XR150 and uh, his buddy's got a T-Dub. So maybe I can uh, interest them in going out and doing some moto camping. Find some more local buddies to ride and camp with. All right, we have arrived. I'm gonna show off my nasty, uh, dirty storage unit here to Frank and get a monitor out of there for him. Key, start, run, start. It looks like a dirt bike. I mean, the, all the controls are dirt bikey. So Frank's gonna let me uh, roll around on his uh, XR150L here. I let him take the, the Riker out a few minutes ago. He rat raced it around. He's like, yeah, that's different. <laughs> different, that's one word for it. So, yeah, cool. Okay, start, run. Wow, that's it. That's it, it's running. I was waiting for it to keep spinning over. It's like, is it, is it running yet? I don't, I don't even feel any vibration from this thing. This is cool. It feels very similar, even sounds similar to uh, my uh, CRF-150. Clutch is really light on it. That's crazy. Ooh, brakes are good. I like the front brake on this thing. Man, that's good. Front brake on it is much better than my uh, my XT250. That's the one thing I've never liked about the XT is the brakes on it are just garbage. I mean, they stop you okay, but you got to grab four fingers, a thumb, and a prayer to get stopped on that thing sometimes. Yeah, I'm going to have to pick one of these up. Handlebars are low, so I'd have to put some risers on it for stand-up riding. Yeah, it feels just like my XR or my uh, CRF150. CRF150's got more girt because it's got a huge rear sprocket on it. It's set up for off-road, obviously. Yeah, this will be fun. I have to ask him how it does at highway speeds. I know they're not really highway machines, but yeah, it's very lightweight, flickable because of that uh, small-ish front tire. 19 inch, I think. 18 or 19 front. I think it's a 19. It's got sufficient grunt. I like it. I'm going to have to get one. I was going to get one of the first ones, uh, you know, July when they first came out, but uh, or June, whatever it was, but it's uh, it was cannonball time. Oh man, I like this. I knew I'd like it. I really like it. It's fun. So I have to be honest, between this and like the Trail 125, I, I, I gotta say this is gonna be a lot more practical, more uh, capable than the uh, trail. I do like my trail, I always have, but uh, it's got just enough shortcomings as far as gearing and all that, that uh, it's just not as capable as I had hoped. And it really boils down to the fact that it doesn't have uh, that high-low gear range. If it had the high-low gearing, it would have just been perfect. Yeah, but this is good fun, man. I like this. Lightweight. I don't know how much different or better it's going to be compared to the X-T250, aside from the brakes that I already mentioned. The brakes are great on this thing. Um, but uh, size and weight-wise, it's almost identical to the X-T. Uh, my X-T has got taller bars. I mean, they probably sit about yay high because it's just different ergonomics on it. And... Uh, 
the uh, bar risers that I have on the XT make it a lot taller, but uh, you know the overall feel is about the same. Um, I would say rider triangle is actually more comfortable on this than it is on my XT. The XT has got a very high under cradle to it to give you crazy ground clearance. I think it's like, you know, 10, 10 inches or something like that. 9 or 10 inches. There's a lot of ground clearance under there. But it makes the uh, the foot peg position a little bit more cramped. Uh, and I noticed for longer rides, the uh, the XT can kind of get on my knees and my hip flexors a little bit. And I got short legs. Uh, but this is a pretty comfortable riding position right here. I like it. I like it. The placement of the pegs is good. Everything's good. And the seat, I'm surprised, man. This seat feels good, man. I'm stealing your bike, Frank. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Oh, wait. Let's see if it's got the uh, starter kill. It does. Yep, it's got a starter kill. Cool. Oh, man, I like that. I'm going to have to get one. I have to put one in the stable. Uh, I had planned on getting one anyway because I want to compare it to my XT, which is buried over there. Ignore the mess in the garage, please. Um, I'll get the trail out and let uh, Frank ride my trail around in just a second. Uh, but yeah, uh, just overall capability, uh, I would say that this is probably a win. Uh, a better overall machine than the uh, CT125. I hate to say it, you know, for all you uh, trail enthusiasts out there. Uh, anybody that's owned one and subsequently sold it, you kind of know what I'm talking about uh, with the... Uh, shortcomings that it has for highway running and uh, even trail riding you know not being able to pop the clutch and stuff like that it makes it a little bit of a problem now of course it's fuel injected and uh, it's going to be probably more reliable overall uh, as a ownership and usage uh, case than this but I think the XR is probably the better animal so when I add one of these to the stable in the very near future my plan is to do a three-way comparison between the XT 250 the XR150L and my CRF150L. Uh, uh, you know, of course, the CRF150 is a full... I need to turn this key off. Uh, the CRF is a full dirt bike, uh, but almost the same identical engine in there. So, yeah. Anyway. Pretty cool. I'll drag the trail out and play with it. All right. I was looking everywhere for the key, trying to find it. thought, crap, I left the key at home. No, the key was in the ignition. You dummy. Um, vroom! eight and a half angry squirrel power yeah. uh, so I'm gonna run him through the controls on it uh, no clutch the clutch is built into the shifter arm itself or the 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 lever so all the way down is neutral and then it's one two three four up so you can either use your toe to lift it or you just push back on your heel and that up shifts so up or back on here to upshift and then to go to lower gears you just go down you can't you can't stall it uh the tricky bit i'll show you we're in neutral so i can do the side stand uh the tricky bit is shifting so when you w yeah you have to roll off the throttle just slightly as you shift and then when you're going back into gear as you push you release slowly because that is what re-engages the clutch so if you jerk it quick uh like a traditional shifter it goes nah, 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 and it kind of lurches around but you know you're not going to hurt it it just it feels funny so yeah have fun run it around <laughs> there's no clutch <laughs> you'll do that at least 10 times in the first mile so down is a neutral. Yeah, that's so one up is yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to get one of these. I like that. I like it a lot. I don't have it yet. Uh, I was gonna get the first one, but uh, cannonball timing was in the way, so I just said now nah, wait. Uh, I've seen in some of the other markets, Mexico and, uh, I don't know, not India, but I can't remember where, uh, they're, they're like just under 3000 like 2875 or something like that. But once you get taxes and fees and everything on there, it's going to be another grand above that. Yeah. Uh, in the other markets, uh, Mexico and some of the other places, I've seen people doing a 21 inch front wheel conversion on it and they get it off of another bike. I'm not sure which other bike, uh, that way you can get more tire 
size options because uh, this 19 is apparently not all that popular uh, for front tire sizes so people are having difficulty finding decent off-road rubber uh, these are very street oriented tread it's not really a uh, blocky enough you know for good off-roading uh, what I'd like to put are some uh, like uh, the what are they the Shinko SR22s or whatever they are uh, on there Golden Boy uh, that type and uh, give it a little bit better off-road capability uh, so I don't know we'll see if they've got the right sizes for that I think the rear should be easy enough to find the front is the tricky one so I might look into doing the uh, 21 inch front wheel conversion uh, I don't know if it's retaining the same hub and you just get different spokes and a hoop or if it's a whole front wheel or what but I'll find out cool bike I like it <laughs> there you go zoom it's a fun machine I just think that the uh, XR is going to be a more capable machine overall. Ergonomics, load capacity, all that. Hey, he's getting the downshifting. He's got it. Pretty cool. What do you think? <laughs> Not De a thing, it's definitely a different riding style than the, uh, oh, yeah. the XRs and all that. Uh... I was commenting riding yours that I think the XR is probably going to be the better overall bike as far as capability, you know, on road, off road, yeah, yeah. because you've got a manual clutch and a little bit more uh, engine power. Yeah. Uh, this yeah, one's yeah. fuel injected, so, you know. Nice little, you know. It's a fun, yeah, it's a fun little runaround bike. Trailer in. Right, right. It just doesn't have quite enough highway chops to get to the trailheads to ride long distance. I mean, I've done a, you know, 16 or 1800 mile trip on it, but. Uh, it's really straining to maintain 50 to 55. I mean, that's kind of its upper reach. So, so compare this to the Cub, it's what, it, it has like the same... It, it's the same basic yeah. design. It's almost the exact, exact same engine. But the Cub, because of different gearing and tuning, uh, it's got almost 10 miles an hour top end on this one. So the Cub gets along. I'll, I'll air up the Cub. Uh, the tire's low on it. I'll let you run it around too. It's fun. It's... Uh, Similar, you know, uh, engine feel and everything, but the gears are longer in it, so it, it's better road use. So here he's uh, going to take off on his maiden voyage on the Cannonball Cub. So one up. Yeah, I've got that thing pretty far back. You might need to use the heel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you might have to learn the heel shift. I told him there's a pretty marked difference in the feel of the bikes even though they're very similar uh the gears are much longer on the uh super cub it's much more road focused <laughs> what do you think it does have a little bit more pep to it yeah it it's just it's like the power is more usable because uh, the gears are longer in it yeah. and it pulls better it's much better road use uh, yeah. road bike oh, it's nice i'm like oh man this is pretty nice it's fun it's a little bit more agile than that i felt like. yeah yeah this one uh, and with the tall tires that i've got on here it makes it a little bit more sluggish feeling but yeah the the super cub is a great road machine i like taking this thing out on the weekends and just Oh yeah, man. Back country roads, back highways out west of Katy and stuff like that. Too, I mean. Yeah, yeah, it's a very comfortable machine. If it just had a tiny bit more horsepower, maybe like two or three more horsepower, and double the gas tank, because it's only got a one gallon gas tank. Oh, it, huh? So you can get 115, 120 miles out of that, but you get into some range anxiety when you're out on those country roads, and it might be 30 or 40 miles till you find a gas station. So you're like, oh shit, I, yeah. So Neil made this in... Uh, uh, that's uh, great use of that storage you know there's nothing else there some people put the little carriers in there and they'll put a little tank bag or something but having fuel on board is great oh yeah thanks uh yeah, yeah before you take off and <laughs> be looking for the key like i was looking for that one yeah so your buddy you were saying uh, was thinking of getting one man yeah you guys ought to get some of these they're just great fun to go out on the weekends and you just go bash back roads and you know anywhere where traffic's not moving real super fast and furious they're just amazing fun and they handle so good yeah. you get them in the twisties these things handle like they're on rails it's amazing oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. the big 17 inch wheels on there really help yeah but yeah no my buddy he and i both got an african twin and, and we're like well, he was like, look, I think I might get a, might sell a twin, get a cup, uh -huh. and get a used gold one. There you go, there you go. 
huh? Yeah, yeah, touring, yeah. That sounds like a pretty badass idea. We see him and I, him and I, ever since we got our small bikes, we're like, you know what? I don't think we've used our twin as much as we used to. It, it's funny. A lot of people, especially experienced riders that have owned a lot of machines, yeah. once you start gravitating back toward the small ones, these are the the gravitational pull is like a black hole. They they just suck you in, and you end up spending so much time on the little bikes because they're unassuming, they're lightweight, they're unintimidating, and they can go anywhere that the bigger bikes go. They just don't get there as fast. Oh, yeah. Relax, soak in the scenery. What are you in such a hurry for? It's great fun, man. It is. It is, man. Once I get home and I drop that and pick this one up, I'm like, ah, oh, the beauty of a small. Isn't it great? It's yeah. just easy it's just easy you're not wrestling the machine you're not uh, there's not that uh, the temptation or the need to go fast yeah. no, no. And, and even when you do ring them out you get that satisfaction of wringing the piss out of it and you're still not going that fast yeah. you know you're not really endangering yourself yeah, what say, uh, <laughs> it's, it's much more fun uh, going uh, fast on a small bike yeah yeah it, it's uh, a lot yeah. more fun to ride a slow bike fast yeah. than a fast bike slow yeah. exactly Exactly. Mini motos are where it's at, man. I love them. It is, man. It's crazy. I'm like... Okay. Well, welcome back to the day in progress. <laughs> and thunder over there. And dumping heavy stuff in a, the dumpster. Uh, yeah, so, anyway, we uh, had a fun morning. Frank came by and uh, met us for breakfast. And uh, we came over here to the warehouse and played with the toys over here. I rode his XR150 around... Uh, yeah, a little one mile loop or something like that just farting around i love that bike i've got to get one uh i knew i'd like it but i really like it <laughs> friggin moto addiction uh i let him ride the riker and the super cub and the trail cub and he thought those were pretty cool uh, he's apparently got a bunch of bikes he's a moto head like i am uh, he's got an africa twin a uh, himalayan uh, the XR150 and I don't know what else he said he's got several bikes so uh, yeah I told him uh, have to meet up one of these weekends uh, he and his buddy have both got uh, Africa twin DCTs and I said yeah we gotta go for a, a breakfast run or a little weekend ride or something one of these days and let you guys ride the rebel DCT because you already know that motor and that powertrain feel it might be interesting to to feel it on a different chassis you know so I'll head out to Katy. Uh, I might just go over there to that iron supply. I've been interested in stopping by there. I've threatened it many times, so I'll just go out there and do it. I'll roll by there, ask them if they're taking trade-ins, have them look at this, see what they think, and uh, get a quick verbal estimate if they're able to do that. All right, so as I recall, this uh, dealer, Iron Supply, is up here about a mile on the left, I think. Maybe not quite a mile. I usually end up passing it and then have to turn back but I've never actually here it is right here not even a mile yeah see I always pass it and then have to turn around I've been by here many times but I've never actually been in all right so here we are Ugh. yeehaw of Texas. Cool. Iron Supply Power Sports. Here we are. They got a lot of bikes sitting out front. Electric bikes. Three-wheeled uh, wannabe bikes. Cool. Bikes, bikes, bikes. Where am I going to park my bike bike? Do, 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 do. I'm going to park it over here. Himalayan. Clunk. The Riker clunk. Okay, cool. Let's go look around. <sighs> Damn, it's hot. I don't know how long I'm going to keep this helmet on. Whew. I need the helmet for the camera, but I don't need it for the heat, I'll tell you that. Scram! 411. So yeah, this is what I wanted to come look at. It still looks like a Himalayan, but it's minus all the... Uh, the add-on now you guys tell me does that look like an afterthought to you it just it doesn't blend with the bike i don't know something about the aesthetics of it i've just never cared for but these are a different story it's basically the same but more naked i like that i have to 
give that a sit and see what it looks like. Uh, I'd rather get one that's not baking in the sun, but we'll see. Cool. Got electric bikes and Triumph bikes and what do we have here? What do we have here? CF Moto. That's cool looking. Papio. Little Grom clone, but that's kind of cool. I have never seen that. CF Moto. I didn't know they had CF Moto here, but that's interesting. With the Interceptor 650. Oh, God, I like that. That's, ooh, this is slick looking. Oh, that is so good looking, man. I like that. I hope they've got one of the uh, Hunter 350s here. I'm going to go digging around, and then I'll uh, put the helmet back on. But I don't want to leave it on right now, because I'm starting to uh, uh, seriously get dizzy. It's so hot out here. So crazy hot. RE. That's the classic 350. Hunter, here it is. Hunter 350. I don't like the white so much, but yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give that a sit. And they got a couple of scooters back here in the back. No, that's a bike. Uh, I'm going to take this off and go looking. It's hot. Oh, well, I'll take you inside, then I'll turn this off, because the camera's just about shut down anyway. It's, uh, it's too hot. Oh, Lord, it's hot. Howdy! What's going on? I'm shopping. All right. I've been in here... Uh, monopolizing the sales guy's time. Uh, he actually uh, was over at uh, Wild West for 14 years. I thought he looked familiar. Uh, <laughs> I knew him from over there. Uh, look at this, man. This is the one that I like right here. I really like the silver and light, uh, whatever that lime green, whatever color that is. I like this. This is really good looking to me, and that is even better looking. $39.99 for a brand new 350. That's just awesome. Uh, the 23s don't have the... A uh, little navigation thing as standard equipment. Now it's an option uh, for the 22s. I think it was standard, uh, but 23 it's a it's an add-on. But this bike is really light. I like this, man. I might just have to get this. I mean, I can put it on a credit card right now. <laughs> I shouldn't. I'm trying to temper that urge. 39.99 under four grand for a brand new bike. And from what I understand, this motor is just a peach. Real smooth, not terribly powerful or anything, but very efficient, fuel-injected, smooth. I like it. Uh, and then the other bike that I want, uh, that I've been looking at for quite a while, and this is exactly the one I want, the yellow and silver, Scram 411. It's arguably more machine. It's a, it's a bigger, physically uh, larger machine, bigger engine, uh, but just as uh, nimble and lightweight feeling, slightly taller seat. Get it out of here so I don't hit that bike. And uh, very good seating position. It's essentially the Himalayan, but the, the ergonomics feel different. The seat feels better to me. Uh, it doesn't have all that crap up here in the front. Uh, it's a 19-inch front wheel instead of 21, and a few hundred bucks less than Himalayan, $50.99. So $5,100 versus $39.99, so what, $1,100 difference, uh, 1200 bucks difference. I want both of them. I don't know which one I would prefer. I would have to test ride to know. A little bit of slack on that clutch needs taken up, but yeah, I mean, this just feels awesome. Oh, and this does have the little tripper. Uh, I think they call it the Royal Enfield Tripper, or whatever. It's a little turn-by-turn -turn navigation system, Bluetooth to your phone. So, I'm trying to not get another bike. Why am I here? Because I'm going to be tempted, and I'm going to get another bike. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to walk you around the showroom for a minute. Uh, this is this place is one of those optical illusions. It's much larger inside than it appears to be outside. So you got one section of showroom here. Uh, I'll take you around there, show you that stuff in a minute. Uh, but then you've got this entire other section over here. Parts service uh, area. Got a sofa and a table and lounge and you got uh, motocross gear and all kinds of stuff in here. You got little bikes, big bikes. Uh, all kinds of accessories, helmets, riding gear. You got bikes, bikes, gas, gas. You got a lot of the CF Moto stuff, and I'm going to have to get out of this room because there's music. I got to talk over it, blah, blah, blah. We got adventure bikes, CF Moto, CF Moto, CF Moto, Suzuki, and a couple more things around the corner over there. I'm trying to evade the music. Pardon me, pardon me. Got to get rid of the music. <laughs> might have to cut that whole section. YouTube is pretty evil when it comes to uh, copyright strikes. So yeah, anyway, neat place. Now apparently they're not going to be here too much longer. Uh, they're moving to a much larger store over near uh, Bucky's, uh, just down the street from here a couple miles. 
and they will be selling another bike brand there that I won't mention because they're not allowed to sell them here until they move into that new location. Oh, nice. Nice, nice. Look at that. Oh, that's a good looking light. Triumph. Ooh. Oh, oh. <sighs> she's so sexy. Looks like a hardtail, but it's not. There's your uh, mono shock in the back. Oh man, that is cool. Me likey. Not much of a touring bike. You're not strapping bags on this bad boy. There's nowhere to put them. Thirteen oh ninety five for a twenty three Bonneville Bobber. Ooh, she pretty. She real pretty. Oh, that feels interesting. The seat sucks. Oh, the seat's absolutely horrible. The ergonomics feel good. I like the ergonomics. I don't like that seat at all. The seat is very hard on the edges right here. Not comfy, not for my frame. Looks good though. And then of course, you know, the rocket. If you get deep pockets and uh, enough uh, gonads to handle this thing going down the road. Rocket 3R, 23,000. Mmm, tasty. I think I'd rather get a Diablo than that, but, you know, I'm not into those kind of bikes anymore. Here's a little Trident. I was looking at these a while back. I never did get my money back from that one dealer that stole, what was it, 4000 bucks? Can't remember how much I gave them for a deposit on the new uh, RS660. Never got it. Uh, Aprilia. But I was looking at these as a potential alternative. I do like this Trident. It's a nice little bike. They don't have a, a sticker on it, price-wise. Oof, I like it. I like them all. So I have a big enough garage to hold everything. More Triumphs. Hmm. Nice. Too tall for me. Fun, but too tall. That's good looking. Ooh, me likey. Bonneville Speedmaster. 13.5. It's not a bad price. Is that seat any more comfortable? Ooh, it actually looks fairly okay. Ooh, that feels pretty good. I don't think I like the bend of the bars. I would prefer a little bit more straight bar on this because they're too pinched in this way. It needs to come out a few degrees, but you know, you could always put different bars on it. Feels good. Shiny polished tank. It's so pretty. 3D, hello. Nice. I've never owned a Triumph, and uh, I've never owned any of the Royal Enfield, so I don't know. Royal Enfield are more in my impulse purchase buying range than those are. <laughs> Just because of the price tag. I like this. Man, if I, which one should I get, everybody? Should it be the, the Hunter 350 or the Scram 411? This? Or this? I don't know. That one looks pretty good, too. The black. Hmm. No. I think it would be the, the silver one over there or this guy. I don't know. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? They did an appraisal on the Riker, but I haven't heard the numbers yet, so I'm going to find out. All right. So I spent uh, an hour or so here just slobbering over bikes. Uh, they did a, an appraisal on the Riker, and they're telling me the same money that uh, Wild West uh, is offering is 6000 So uh, I don't know. I'm going to try to do private party sale, uh, but if uh, that doesn't work, then I'll trade it in on something. And it's I think I'm going to get uh, a little Royal Enfield Hunter 350. I really like this little bike. I don't know. Something about it. It's just standard. Reminds me of the old 70s, 80s uh, UJM bikes. Uh, so the real question is which color so there's the white one I'm not real keen on the stuff on the tank here it says ride pure one side says ride the other side says pure but the white doesn't look too bad I'm not keen on the wording but that looks good uh, then there's the silver one inside uh, that's the same price the $39.99 and then there's the upcharge one with the fancier paint that's black uh, and it's $40.99 or $41.99 uh, I think that black is going to be very dirty and uh, scratch prone on top, so that's the reason that I'm not real keen on it. So I think really for me the choice is going to be between the uh, white one or the uh, silver one in there. So I don't know. 
What do you guys think? White or silver? White or silver? One of them's coming home with me. Not today, but very, very soon. Anyway, I'm going to hit the road. It's hot as hell. It's over 100 degrees out here already. And uh, I'll get back home and start working on uh, uh, taking pictures of this thing and listing it for sale and all that. See what else I can accomplish on the uh, video editing front. Maybe put this vlog out today, Saturday. We'll see. So, anyway, kind of what I expected. I was just hoping I could get another few hundred. If I could get 7,000 trade in at a dealer, then done. I would do it today. But another thousand bucks off of, uh, you know, uh, what I should be able to sell it for, that just kind of hurts. And obviously the performance suspension and all that, I'm going to have to pull that off, put the factory stuff back on it, which takes a little time. Front shocks are easy. They can be done in just a few minutes. Rear shocks are a pain in the butt because you got to pull the exhaust and jack it up and work in there from the back side and everything to get the uh, the pivot bolt out and all that stuff so it's a couple hour job 